All right. With so much of discussion about the evolution of uh, oscillator, evolution of amplifier, what has happened in the past, what has happened, what is going to happen in the future, let let us now see what is happening in the present in our lab. So, in this module, which hopefully is going to be shorter than usual, um, we'll talk about what is there in the lab, in uh, well inside this box. This is the one box amplifier, the name is Libra HE and it is from Coherent. This is what we have in our lab. It is input, well we will talk about input later, uh, its output is uh, 4 millijoule pulses, 800 nanometer modal wavelength at 1 kilohertz. So, this is a uh, literally a black box, but fortunately it is a black box uh, whose lids you can take off. So, it is not a black box figuratively. So, if you take the lid off and look from the top, this is what you see. You see that the box actually contains more boxes. The first one is the oscillator. In our case, we have a Vitesse oscillator from Coherent. Now, this once again is a compact titanium sapphire oscillator. In this laser, there are two parts. This side, the side where Vitesse is written, that is where uh, we have this uh, diode pump solid state laser, which pumps the tie sapphire laser, which is on this side. And this is a very uh, compact design, very pretty much like the Maitai laser from Spectra Physics that we had. Uh, shown when we had visited our lab. Uh, this one gives the uh, 80 megahertz output at 800 nanometer and uh, the pulse energy is nanojoule, right. Then this here is the amplifier. As you know, the amplifier has to be pumped by another laser typically a ND AG or ND ELF laser with some 100 200 nanosecond full width of maximum. This is what it is. Uh, this I made a mistake here. The pump laser is ND ELF, the name is evolution from coherent, but the full width of max is 150 nanosecond in this case, not 250 nanosecond. And this laser operates at 1 kilohertz. That is what determines the repetition rate of the regenerative amplifier. Okay. And then we have also discussed that before the seed can go into the amplifier, it must be stretched. The stretcher is here and the output of the region is really a chopped pulse, amplified but chopped pulse. It has to be compressed. This is where the compressor is. So, it is really a very, very compact design. And uh, that is why in case the alignment goes wrong for some reason, usually it does not. In case it goes wrong, then to get the alignment back is uh, not an easy task. So, schematically this is what happens. The pump laser creates the excited state population in the titanium sapphire crystal inside the amplifier. The output oscillator is stretched and the stretched seed pulse is fed into it, into the uh, titanium sapphire inside the region. Output of region goes into compressor and after compression, we get the uncharped narrow pulse that we want to work with. Now, this is a schematic, but what we will try to do in the next 10, 15 minutes or so is that we will try to get at least a rough idea about the light paths inside this system. Okay. The figures that I have used here are all taken from the user manual of Libra IG. So, this is another way of looking at it. What you saw earlier was really a photograph, this is a schematic, well this is what it is. 
this is the first thing that happens. Was that too fast? Output of the tie sapphire laser hits SM1. Now, here uh, the naming is systematic. SM means a mirror in the stretcher. 1 means the mirror that comes first, 2 means the mirror that comes afterwards and so on and so forth. So, as you see this one is SM1, this is a SBS, what could SBS be? It is a stretcher beam splitter. In our case we do not really take the beam out, but here in this laser there is an option, a uh, small amount of the beam can actually come out of this port. So, you can take it out and use it for some other application. The limitation is that you cannot tune it. When it is inside, uh, when the oscillator is used along with a compressor, then it is not a good idea to keep changing the wavelength because there has to be an exact match between the seed and light within the region. So, comes out, hits SM1, SBS, SM2 and then goes to the stretcher grating like this okay and this here is what the grating looks like all right now what happens inside the grating we have discussed it already in a previous module so we'll not repeat but one thing that we need is this is the input comes to the grating that's what we have shown here using the red light can you see what i have drawn here can you see these lines can you see the red line Okay. So, the red line comes in, hits the grating, then it hits this big circular uh, concave mirror several times SM3, goes to SM4, does several round trips and finally, from SM7, the output is obtained, the chopped output. Okay. So, where is SM7 here, do you see? This is SM7, right. So, from SM7, oh, but before that I want to say something. What is this? SPD, S for stretcher, what is PD? No, PD, polarizer would be only a P. In fact, there is a P here, see RP, that is region polarizer, but this is SPD, so, photodiode, photodiode. As we have said earlier, it is very important to time the events, right. So, how will you time the events? The way it is done is by using different photodiodes in different places or by taking synchronous electrical outputs. In this case, what happens is there is a photodiode, stretcher photodiode SPD behind the stretcher mirror 4. Okay? And even though these are high reflectors, it is they are not really 100 percent reflectors. Even if 99 percent is reflected and 1 percent bleeds through, that is enough for the, for the photodiode. So, this photodiode captures the bleed through of SM4. And that the output of the photodiode is used for timing the events. All right. Now let us come back to the light. So we said that we were at SM7. From SM7, the chopped beam goes to SM8, SM9. It is basically a periscope, periscopic arrangement like this. Comes in here, goes up and goes in this direction. Goes where? to SM10, that is the last mirror in the stretcher. From SM10, where does it go? Now what should happen? Stretching is done, right? What was the red beam now is chopped, where should it go now? It should go into the uh, region. How does it go into the region? You have seen so many designs now. The first one that we discussed in a lot of detail in one of the previous uh, modules was one where the output of the stretcher went and hit the uh, tie sapphire crystal in the region, isn't it? And that being at Brewster angle reflected it. So that is what happens here as well. Okay. So the region goes and hits here. Can you read what is written here? RTS. What is that? Region tie sapphire. T for titanium, S for sapphire, R for regenerative amplifier. And then of course, you understand that it will be reflected and it will go into the cavity, fine. But let us leave that for the moment. I will show you how it goes into the cavity. But before that, let us first establish 
what the path of light is within the region. Okay, right. So, as you understand, the evolution is the laser that is pumped for the region. What do you have in front of it? This is a mirror, right? What you see here is a mirror, photograph of which is taken from the top. And we are not going to go to the lab and open up the uh, amplifier because I am a little scared to do that. We do not do it unless it is absolutely necessary. So, this is what we want to do in detail. So, see th this what is written here? PM1. PM1. And now I think we are getting the hang, hang of the nomenclature. M would be mirror, 1 would be number 1 first. What is P? Pump. That is very simple. So, that is pump mirror 1, the first mirror that uh, the pump beam hits. After that, it comes this wave actually. Do you see what this is? PL12. So, this is uh, you can if required, you can increase or decrease the size of the beam. So, it is sort of like a telescope. Okay. You take two uh, lenses of uh, different focal length okay, and place them side by side. So, that their focal the, the uh, fo uh, focal points match. What will happen? You have this beam. Let us say this is where the focus is. The beam gets focused and then it is captured by this lens here. If the focal length of the second lens is smaller, do you agree that the beam will go from a broader waist to a smaller waist? We must say like this, it has been focused here and then it goes out like this. Now, the cross section will be only this much. Is not it? So, that is what is there L 1 and 2, then it comes to P M 2, then we have another one P L 3, L is lens, then P M 3, let us go one by one. So, P M 1 first hit, then it has gone to P M 2, P M 1, P M 2, then from P M 2 it goes through P L 3 to P M 3. From PM3, it goes straight through the tie sapphire rod and while doing that, it goes through one of these mirrors. Since it will get covered, I want you to read the name. What is this? RM3. RM3 is a, again dichroic mirror. It allows green light to go through. It is going to reflect red light completely. So, it goes straight okay, and then it is dumped. So, pumping of the region is done. Now, let us see uh, what the path of uh, light from the region, well within the region is. We are not talking about the seed, we are just talking about the uh, region as a self standing laser. Okay. What is the path? This is the path. So, see PM1, uh, uh, sorry RM1, what is RM1? This one. What do you have after that? PC1, what would PC be? Pockel cell, first pockel cell and here you have PC2, the second pockel cell. And now we know why we have pockel cells in the cavity to switch in and switch out. This here is the pockel cell driver. Pockel cell driver means the electronics that uh, that will uh, okay tells the pockel cell to work or not to work. Basically, gives the voltage to pockel cell. Okay, that is of course not in the uh, pockel cell driver cannot be in the path of the light. It's opaque. Okay, so from PM one through the pockel cell and I did not read something you can read here. What is this? R, R w, what is that? Yes, a region wave plate. So, you can turn the polarization as required. So, from R m 1 it goes to R m 2. From R m 2 it goes to R m 3. Remember that was R m 3. And when it goes through R m 3, then uh, RM2 to RM3 is through the uh, TISAF. Now, if you look carefully, do you see the crossover? Yeah, crossover between the green light and the uh, yellow light? Because the pump cannot be uh, coaxial with the cavity, then it can be a problem perhaps. So, a little bit of angle is there. So, it crosses, it goes to PM3. Then from PM3, it goes to PM4. No, what am I saying? RM. From RM3 region, R for region, huh? P is for pump. From RM2, it goes to RM3 through the tie sapphire crystal 
and by the way the tisophere crystal is at an angle so we will come to that later. Then from RM3 uh, what is there after this what is RP I told you region polarizer. So it goes through the region polarizer through the focal cell the second focal cell to RM4 okay. From RM4 it goes to RM5 right. So now it looks like a W kind of thing soon the W will no longer be W it will be something more than W triple U quadruple U something like that okay. From RM5 it goes to RM6 and that is the end of the cavity region cavity okay is the cavity now defined RM1 to RM6 folded several times and the light passes through different optical elements it has to pass through the gain medium of course but it also passes through this focal cell half wave plate polarizer okay and the polarizer that is there is also at an angle that is that becomes important a little later now before going further now uh, can you guess where the seed goes the seed has come from sm10 and it has hit the region tisophere crystal from there where, where will it go to help you i can put it like this this is how the tisophere is and the seed comes like this in which direction will it go definitely something like this. So, what happens is there is another bleed through and there is a region photodiode as well you see RPD. So, that is that is the most important thing that is what you see on the oscilloscope. But now coming back to the original uh, discussion. So, the this is where did you see the seed goes from the tisophere crystal to RM2 all right. And then here alignment becomes very very important because the path from the tisophere laser RTS to RM2 has to be exactly coincidental uh, exactly the same as the path of the self sustaining beam inside the laser. Otherwise it will not be able to do the round trip are you clear yeah. So, the self sustaining laser the yellow lines that we have drawn that sort of defines the path and your uh, seed sharp seed must travel back and forth along that path that is how it does the round trips. So, it is essentially the same thing that we had discussed earlier the same figure that is there in the uh, laser spectroscopy book the difference is there for simplicity's sake a straight cavity was shown here the cavity is folded because if you fold the cavity you save a lot of space are you clear any question can I go ahead great. Huh. So, one thing that I was taken a little unaware of because I forgot about it is this through the uh, RM4 mirror there is a bleed bleed means 0.5 percent 1 percent of light getting through the mirror that is enough it is captured by this uh, RPD the photodiode inside the uh, region cavity and we see the output we'll, we are going to discuss what we see all right. Now it is doing round trips now you want to switch it out what how will you do it focal cell 1 has switched it in and we know the sequence of events switched it in turned off or whatever or not turned off not turned off in this case. Now, if you want to switch it out then focal cell 2 has to go on and then from where will it get reflected what is the polarizing optic after focal cell 2. Look at the yellow line this is focal cell 2 it comes here while coming back P PC 2 gets turned on or maybe while going PC 2 gets turned on. 45 degrees rotation coming back 45 degree rotation comes straight where region polarizer. So, this polarizer is actually at a 45 degree angle or well not 45 some angle polarizer is not like so this is the uh, direction of the beam polarizer is not like this it is like this 
right. So, as long as the uh, polarization of the light is such that it will go through, there is no problem. Sorry, it is like this. The moment you turn the polarization by 90 degrees, it will now go off like this. Clear? So, this is what happens. From region polarizer, it goes to what is this called? Region mirror 7. Okay. It is still called region mirror, it has not gone into the uh, amplifier, sorry, compressor yet. Then it goes to region mirror 8, 9. See what happens is the heights may not be matched. The height at which the optics are, well, in uh, stretcher and in the compressor and in the region, they might be different. So, when you want to change height, I think now we are familiar with it, we have to use something like a periscopic arrangement, right. So, it goes to these mirrors and then it hits CM1. What is CM1? Compressor mirror 1. Now, the compressor starts and we have already discussed what happens inside the compressor. It gets compressed, the amplified chirp beam and it goes out. In our case, it goes out in this direction. Uh, in some cases, if you want the light to go out from here, you, are, you need to have another mirror here. See CM6, we do not use CM6, it is not in place. So, if CM6 is there, then the light would go out in this direction. It all depends on how you want your experiment to be. Okay? In our case, it comes out of this port and that is your uh, 1 kilohertz amplified 4 millijoule unchapped 70 frame to second beam. All right? Now, if you look at the uh, so as we have said earlier also, it is not just about light, it has got a lot to do with electronics, time electronics to be more precise. And you have seen that we use uh, photodiodes to monitor uh, the beam in different places of this contraption, right. And outputs are all here, okay. From here, you have to uh, use the signals appropriately to give delays that are required to sustain the amplified operation. So, we have discussed this once already, but still uh, let us look at the figure that is there in the uh, user's manual. To start with, can you read whatever is written here? I just copy paste it from the manual. Okay. So, first of all, you have something like that looks like a comb, right? That is your output of the uh, oscillator, 80 megahertz, so th the pulses are very, very close. Next, what happens is you pump the uh, amplifier, right. This is the uh, laser pulse of the pump laser, 150 nanosecond. So, what you want to do really is that you want to wait until this time, because in this region, more or less the uh, intensity of pump is same. In fact, I will go one step further and I will show you the gain. As we discussed in one of the previous modules, the gain trails a little bit right, and persists a little longer as well. See, so in this region, uh, it is not horizontal of course, but the change in gain is not so much. This is the region where you want to do the amplification. This is the time regime in which you want to do the amplification. So, what you do is, you introduce this delay 1. Look at the output of the laser, you see this delay 1, delay 2 and all that. Uh, this is delay 1, right. So, now, well, uh, we do not have to go into coarse delay, fine delay and all that. This is where the amplification begins. So, delay 1 is given to start amplification, delay 2 is given to switch the pulse out, right. And then, this is what we had discussed earlier, do you see, this is what you see on the oscilloscope, do not you? Build up of the uh, region, the seed being amplified in the region and then more or less near the maximum, you switch it out and then you do not see the remaining part. And this is the pulse that is switched out, okay. That concludes our discussion of oscillators and amplifiers. It has been uh, 
quite a long journey, but I hope that now the black box is no longer so black to us. At least it has become a grey box. Okay. We still do not want to play around and change things inside, but even when we operate, unless we know what is the meaning of what the meaning of this uh, delay 1, delay 2 is, we can make mistakes. So, it is important to know what is going on here. So, what I will of course, not for the remote audience, but for uh, in house people, I recommend that you read the manual and uh, follow up on this. You do not have to read everything because we do not really do everything, we do not install uh, the grating and all every day, but you should know what is what, you should know the sequence of events, you should understand how it is working. Okay. We stop here today. In the next module, we hope to talk about the next step. The amplifier gives you a single wavelength, 800 nanometer in this case. Of course, it has, has its own bandwidth, but it is not tunable. If I want tunability, then I want to use something called an optical parametric amplifier. Uh, the problem of discussing optical parametric amplification is that it is a non-linear optical process. So, ideally, we should talk about it only after we have performed a significant discussion of non-linear optics. But there are two problems to that. First of all, uh, I am not really a nonlinear optics person. Secondly, uh, to do a thorough discussion of nonlinear optics, that would require a long, long time. So, we will see what we will do. Perhaps we will discuss nonlinear optics without derivation, only the functional parts that we need, and we will see. Uh, whether we can uh, go ahead and talk about optical parametric amplification. As we will see, uh, most of the time we want to do a collinear amplification, but then in for some applications, it is better to have a non collinear amplification. So, you do not want to use an OPA as such, you want to use what is called a NOPA, non linear OPA. So, uh, in the next uh, two or three modules, we hope that we are going to talk about OPA first with reference to the topaz system that we have in our lab. And then what I really want to do is there is uh, this nice discussion of NOPA in a review written by not a review, uh, they had built one in by Professor Umapati in current science few years ago. Uh, maybe we will try and discuss that. Okay. So, here we close the discussion on amplifiers. <laughs>